Hi guys, and welcome to a new topic. Uh, this is the first of the videos in the production of materials topic. And so we're going to start today by looking at ethene and crude oil. Ethene is the focus chemical for the first section of the production of materials topic. And we need to understand its structure, uh, the homologous group uh, to which it belongs, and why it is such an important uh, component of petroleum. So firstly, ethene or ethylene is uh, a, an alkene. Okay, so that's its group. And that means that it has a double bond present in the structure. That's its functional group. The ene is an indicator of a double bond. And so therefore we have a double bond between the two carbons because it's eth, eth means two. The importance of ethylene is um, hard to sort of summarize in a very short video, but we'll actually have a look at a lot of the reactions that uh, are in, uh, involve ethylene. And probably one of the most important is the fact that it's the monomer for the production of a large number of very important polymers and plastics. So we're going to have a look at some of these reactions in a little bit more detail. Its um, functional group is the double bond, and the double bond um, affects its chemical properties, its reactivity. And so, again, we'll have a look at that in a little bit more detail later on. And I'll actually get you to construct, uh, using the Molly Mod kits, a model um, similar to the one that's shown on this slide. Most of the hydrocarbons that we uh, use commercially and domestically uh, come from crude oil. Now, crude oil naturally is a naturally occurring mixture and it contains a large number of hydrocarbons uh, with many different lengths of carbons. Obviously, the very small length carbons like um, ethene are gases at room temperature. And so often they may be associated with the actual crude oil itself as a gas deposit. But they can also be extracted from crude oil by cracking larger molecules into smaller molecules. And we'll have a look at that process in the next video. When crude oil is extracted from deposits underground, the first thing that we have to do is we have to separate the fractions. And we do that through a process of fractional distillation. Now you should be aware of this process because we covered it in the preliminary course. It's basically a separation process based on the physical properties of boiling points. So different fractions have different boiling points and hence they can be separated on the basis of those differences. The very small carbon chains are the ones that have the lowest boiling points and they separate out very, very quickly, very early. And some of the carbon compounds um, uh, in excess of 70 carbons uh, are the ones that are, have a much higher boiling point and they will be right at the bottom of the fractionating column. So this column here is known as a fractionating column and you can see um, each of these different sort of uh, chemicals, different compounds uh, and different groups actually coming out uh, at different levels. So we can see um, our very um, low small chain carbons coming out at the top our LPG, um, butane for cigarette lighters, octane for cars, um, aviation fuels, and so on. The point about fractional distillation is that it's based on differences in boiling point. And the thing with differences in boiling point is the boiling point relates to the intermolecular forces, that is the forces between the molecules, not the intramolecular, which is the one within. The longer the chain, the greater the number of dispersion forces between the individual molecules. And hence, because there are more intermolecular, uh, intermolecular forces, there is a higher boiling point. Because each of these is only a carbon and hydrogen uh, compound, the bonds that are formed between them are only dispersion. And so all we're looking at is the actual average number of dispersion forces per molecule. And as that increases, the boiling point increases. So you can see on the graph, as our number 
of carbons increase, so does our boiling point. So a quick question. From 2006, the first question was, what is the main industrial source of ethylene? And hopefully, the answer is obvious, petroleum. Thanks for watching.